This is our lab, where we're going to do some incredible body experiments. Ah, that really hurt. Just don't try any of this at home. Today, it's muscles. Meet Tiny from Tottenham. Yeah, we've already met. Tiny, put my brother down. <laughs> Go on, mate, put me down. <laughs> You've got a lot of muscle. Can we have a look at your biceps? Not Chris, not you. How big is that bicep? 24 inches. 24 inches, so that's 61 centimetres. That's amazing. So Tiny's bicep is probably bigger than your waist. Tiny's muscles are big and very, very strong. But what are they made of? Well, your muscles are made up of fibres formed from millions of individual cells, and blood vessels deliver the energy that your muscles need in order to move. Now, a single muscle fibre on its own isn't very strong, but when you gather a bunch of them together, they become much more powerful. But Tiny doesn't have any more muscle cells than Chris. So how did Tiny's muscles get so big? Tiny, how have your muscles got so big and strong? I've been training for 15 years. The only day I don't train is Christmas Day because the gym's shut. I don't train on Christmas Day. <laughs> right, so when Tiny goes to the gym and lifts weights, what happens is the heavy weight causes small tears in the muscle fibres, and that stimulates his body to build those fibres back bigger and stronger than before. That's how his muscles got so big and strong. Tiny, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in today. <laughs> oh, Chris, <laughs> never be cheeky to a man called Tiny. So, how do our muscles actually work? Your brain controls your muscles by sending a small electrical charge down a nerve to the muscle. That tells the muscle to move. But what happens when we take control away from the brain and stimulate the muscle directly with these electrodes? I'm attaching electricity conducting pads to Chris's arms. When I press these buttons, electrical charges are sent directly to his muscles, which will make his arms move. See? That was me! Now let's see how many beakers Chris can down while I try to override his brain and control his muscles. OK, Chris, 15 glasses, 30 seconds. Now remember, I'm in control. You've got to drink as much as you can. Right, you ready? No problem. <laughs> Chris is struggling because whilst his brain is sending electrical charges to move his muscles correctly, I'm interfering by sending my own electric charges. With these opposing charges fighting each other, Chris's coordination is all over the place. I'll let go of it. There we go. Oh. <laughs> you, can't, you can't, you cannot let go. No, right. just put it down. Just no, I can't. Really. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 I'm pretty I well, only two left. <laughs> So we've shown that you can override the brain using these electrodes, but not very successfully. The brain is really important for coordination of muscles. You did really well, Chris. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> In this amazing room, sophisticated cameras and computer technology help create 3D models of your wall. So we will look at them very accurately and we'll describe how they're walking and what they're doing wrong. Yes, but why am I dressed in this ridiculous outfit? So that we know where you are and what you're doing, we have to put little markers on you. Time to put my best foot forward. Let's start walking. Off you go. So I've done my walking and now I'm going to have a look at the 3D model of me and see what's going on. You have got a normal, efficient way of walking. Is this the kind of walk that a, a really cool person would have, like a movie star or a dancer or something like that? Um, it's, it's an ordinary walk. It's an ordinary <laughs> walk. So, my barefoot walk looks good, but most of the time we wear shoes. Are there any kinds of shoes that are bad for you? Um, yes, there are shoes that are bad for you. Shoes that are too, too small, or girls tend to wear shoes that are too high. You got something in a different colour. <laughs> Chris can see me now. Jill wants to show me how shoes can affect the way your muscles and joints work. Uh, I'm gaining a bit of confidence now. I think they're quite impressed. But as I discover, it's really hard to walk fast.
By looking at my stick figure, you can see that my knees never straighten in heels, which has a big knock-on effect on the rest of my body. So you can see how bad it would be for someone to wear heels the entire time. You'd expect them to have foot problems, you'd expect them to start to have some knee, hip and back problems. In fact, all styles of shoes can affect your body, and no matter what you wear on your feet, it's really important that your shoes fit properly. I've learned that my walk is basically normal. We've also seen how much shoes affect the way you walk. But most tragically, my ambitions to be a catwalk model have been destroyed. Thanks, Jill. How much sweat does the average adult produce in a year? Is it A, enough to fill a large water pistol, B, enough to fill a bucket, or C, enough to fill a family car? In fact, the answer is C, enough to fill a family car. 1,264 litres, to be precise. Ugh. This is a case for investigation. Ouch. Ugh. Your feet have over 250,000 sweat glands. Sweat is mainly salt and water, but when you mix it with the otherwise harmless bacteria that live on my feet and the warm, moist socks that they live in, it's a real feast. And what you're smelling is the waste products from the bacteria. <coughs> this is Loughborough University, the place to come to study all things sweaty. We're going to find out why we sweat and find out where we sweat the most. Using some high-tech equipment and this sweat collection vest, we're going to collect Chris's sweat. Now I've got to run on this treadmill in this room, which is kept at 50 degrees Celsius, and I promise you that is really hot. If your bath was this hot, you'd burn yourself. Off you go, then. I'm just jogging, you know, if I was doing this outside, this would be relatively easy. And I've just got these fans in front of me blowing hot air at me. Running in a room which is 50 degrees is causing Chris's body temperature to rise dramatically. If it rose to the same temperature as the room, he'd definitely be dead. So I need to lose heat, and it's very hard to lose heat when the air around you is hotter than you need to be. And the only way you can do it is by sweating. So hot it hurts! So the reason we sweat is to take the heat energy away from our bodies to allow us to cool down when we get hot. But it doesn't work very well when you put on a bin bag it stops you evaporating the sweat. True, but you can't stop running yet. The sweat Chris is producing is not only full of salt, there are other things lurking in there too. And in fact, sweat is a lot like your pee. It's a lot like urine. So you can think about that next time you're licking it off your upper lip. Gross. I think we've got enough sweat, though. OK, let's uh, stop Chris. This is Professor George Havanith, an expert in sweat. Well, it's a smelly job, but somebody's got to do it. He's weighing all the pads from Chris's vest and shoes to find out how much sweat he's made and where the most sweat has come from. Ouch. The hallway. It's the last room in the house you leave and the first you come back to. It's the part of the house that says, hey, I'm going out somewhere and hey, I'm back. But the hallway can also be a place of danger. Whoop. You could hit your head on one of the coat hooks. Ow! You could trip over the shoes that you've carelessly left lying around. Oh. Ouch! Or you could forget to take your muddy shoes off and start walking upstairs, leaving footprints everywhere which will make your mother furious. Whoop. If you look out for those dangers, you should be fine. Oh, Zond, can you get the door? Sure. My finger! Ooh, yep. I've got a minor injury. So what should you do if you hurt your finger? A, hit a bone in all the other fingers to match them up. B, tell your teacher you can't do any writing ever again. Or C, apply something cold to the finger. The answer is C. Apply something cold and hold it there for no more than 10 minutes.
Right, let's go to the park. Where's the football? It's right in the hallway, just by my shoes, next to my... Yeah! Skateboard. So, if you hurt your finger, then put something cold on it for no more than 10 minutes or until the pain has gone away. We've got some incredible body tricks for you to show your friends. Want to make your arms float all by themselves? Well, that's what this lot are trying to do. Come on, Paul, push harder. Believe it or not, their arms are rising up completely on their own. They're just like, a whee! It's making my hands move. When I go like this, it rises. I actually feel like my hands are rising up. That's quite weird. So how is this possible? What do we do to make it happen? First, you need to push your hands against each other like this. With the person on the inside pushing out and the person on the outside pushing in. Do this really hard against each other for as long as you can. Then let go and the person with the arms on the inside needs to relax and then see what happens. Now, who thinks they can explain why it worked? If the person's putting pressure, like, is pushing, and then you're pushing really hard back, if they let go, like, really quickly and you're still pushing, your arms will just go, like, bounce and they'll go up. Well, Lorenzo is right. Because your arms are pushing so hard against your partners, when you stop, it takes your arms a little time to relax and realise that the force has gone and this is what makes your arms float. Right, so what happens is you're tensing all your muscles and then when you relax, the muscles that were tense are still pulling your arms up. So all these muscles that have been tense, you're relaxing the push in, and the, the muscles that are on the outside of your arms are still quite tense, and they're just making it feel like your arms are lifting up. He thinks Lorenzo's explanation was better. <laughs> OK, you're right. Lorenzo was better. The school playground, a great place to play, blow off steam and relax with your friends. But with so much going on, it can also be a place of danger. You could fall off the climbing frame. Or bash your head playing hide and seek. With so many different ways to hurt yourself, you can never be too careful. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, out! My leg! I think it's broken! Oh, dear! Looks like an injury alert! Ouch! So, what should you do if you break a leg? A. Ask your mum if she'll carry you around the house for six months. B. Support the injured leg to keep it still and call 999. C. Chop the leg off. It's no use now it's broken. And B because doctors can heal it instead of like C chopping your um, leg off and you don't have no leg. Oh yeah, is right. The correct answer is B. Now check this out. Ah! Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is support Zahn's broken leg. You don't need anything fancy for this. We can just use whatever is around. Remember, we're showing you what to do in an emergency, but it's always best to find an adult. So Zahn, how does your leg still feel? Ah! OK, so I think we do need to call 999. 999, ring, ring. Which service do you require? I want an ambulance, please. And what's your location? I'm at the Operation Out School in Children's BBC. Dr Zond has broken his leg. Stay with the patient and we'll send an ambulance. Great, thank you very much. Bye-bye. So now we're going to sit with Dr Zond, provided he doesn't shout too loudly, and make sure that he's OK until the ambulance gets here. Time for this lot to have a go. <laughs> Yeah, Eunice, that's really good. It looks nice. So you just don't want to move that leg at all. You just want to support it. So what are you going to do, Andrew? Nine, nine, nine. Go for it. What service do you require? Ambulance, please. My friend Rob has broken his leg and he needs help. Staying calm, knowing that everything's going to be OK, and knowing they will send an ambulance is really important. So, if you think you might have broken your leg, support it to stop it moving using anything that's handy and tell an adult or call 999. Luckily, mine was only a sprain. Good. We can keep on playing, then. Come on, Sand. Make an effort. <laughs>